As we explained in the parenting videos, we are going to have a lot of problems when we create the controllers to manage our animation. We do not key geometry, nor do we key our joints. And obviously, one of the reasons is because it's really hard to find the joints. You would have to hide the geometry and so on. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a series of controllers using NURBS curves. The reason why we use NURBS curves is because they do not render. So NURBS curves are found under our Curves and Surface tab right here. Or we can go to Create NURBS Primitives, and then we can go to the Circle or the Square. Now, if we create a circle, and I hit R for Scale, and I scale my circle right here, you will notice that this NURB circle is one single piece. If I was to create, for example, a NURBS square, I can do it right here, and I enlarge it. If I was to select this Q, notice that this square is made out of actually four curves. Now, we do have a video that shows you how to combine those four curves into one single curve. I will post the link in the description of this video. So I'm quickly going to do this. And as you can see, now we can select the controller and it selects all of the curves as one, as you can see right here in the outliner. Let's create all the controllers and we're going to explore the concept of creating offset groups. So the rest of the controllers that I'm going to do, I'm going to use NURBS curves. I just created a curve right here. I have to make sure that this curve, when we put it right here, that it can be seen from any angle. And once it's in position, so I'm going to move this guy. Let me change the color of my canvas. I'm going to snap this curve to this joint right here. To do that, just move your curve, hold V to snap the point, which is this shortcut right here. And I'm going to hold my middle mouse button as I drag on top of my joint, like so. Now, I can select this curve right here, delete the history, freeze the transformation, and center the pivot. And this controller is going to work perfectly because I want the rotation angle of this controller, let me hit E, to mimic our scene. So in the scene, our Y is going up, our Z is going from our left to our right. That's why this controller right here, it's blue, because it imitates the Z. And then this controller right here will be our X rotation. It faces the same direction as the X axis on our scene. Here's where the problem occurs. If I was to select, for example, this joint right here, notice that this joint's rotation angle, it's different to that one of the scene. If I enlarge the gizmo, my X rotation, it's perpendicular to the axis of my joint. That is the correct direction. Now, if I zoom in into this joint right here, let me hit Q to select this joint. Notice that the joints have an icon for their rotation angle. Notice that the X shoots right in the middle of the joint. The Y goes up in this direction and the Z goes towards us in this situation. When I go to this joint right here, the X goes to the right of the screen, the Z towards us, and the Y up. This rotation angle matches that to the scene's rotation angle. So what's going to happen is that if I create a controller, and for example, let me duplicate this controller right here and snap it to this joint, move the object first, hold V, and then I'm going to hold my middle mouse button and then drag it so that it snaps to this joint. So let's say, for example, I rotate this controller right here. Let me type in 90 degrees. And let me scale this guy down. Perfect. And let's say that I'm happy right here. Let me open the geometry just to make sure that we'll be able to see this controller. Yeah, this is going to work. 
So let's say, for example, I say, all right, I'm going to freeze the transformation of my controller so that when I start animating this arm rotating in this direction, that if I want to set it back to its default position, I can select everything and type in zero. So let's say that we freeze the transformation and we center the pivot. Now I can move this controller and I want to reset it. I would go to X and then type in zero and we're back to the default position. If you look at the rotation angle of this joint right here, the X is parallel to the axis of the joint. But in our controller, this is not the same. So for this to work for us, we would have to inherit the rotation angle of this joint right here. The way that we fix this is by creating a group called the offset group and then parent this controller inside of that offset group. Then we are going to select this joint right here and we are going to constrain the orientation of this joint to the offset group. And because this offset group carries this controller as its child, the child is always going to be zero. The information right here will be set to zero and the scale will be set to one. But the parent, the offset group, will inherit all the information from this joint. We are going to use two types of constraint. One is going to be an aim, so we can aim that group with the axis of this joint and the next constraint is going to be a point and what the point is going to do is going to move that group to this position right here to the same origin of this joint and by dragging its child this controller right here will move to the same position and again remember the most important part is that the child will not inherit all the information that the parent carries the offset then what we're going to do is we're going to hide those folders and all we will see will be the controller with the same orientation as this joint right here but with all its attributes set to zero except for the scale obviously so let's do that let's go and create a new null and we do that by deselecting anything in our either scene or art liner we go to edit group this is how you create a simple null and we're going to name this one the same name as the child. So if this it's going to be our arm base controller, I'm going to rename this NURB controller arm base CTR for controller. Then the parent, the offset group will be called arm base controller offset. This way I know that this will be the parent that will inherit all the information and location of this joint. So let's parent the arm base controller to the parent, which is going to be the arm base controller offset. I'm going to hold command on a Mac or control on a PC, and I'm going to hit P, and there you have it. Now, this offset group carries its child. So no matter what happens to the parent, the child will follow. Notice that I did not select the child. I selected the parent, and the child gets selected because it's part of the parent. So let's apply a couple of constraints. The basic rules of parenting have been that we first select the child and then the parent. You hit P and they're parented. For constraints, we're going to select the constrainer first and then whatever we are going to constrain. So in our case, we would select the joint first, which is going to constrain the orientation and the location of our offset group, and then holding command on an apple and control on a PC, you select the arm base control offset group, not the child, but the parent. We are going to go to our constraints. I'm going to move them here to the side so you can see. And first, we're going to do the orient. Now, always reset your settings. Go to edit, reset. And we do this because we do not want to apply a maintain offset. We do have videos that cover every single constraint in our rigging menu. But for now, we're just going to hit apply. And now notice that the orientation of our offset folder matches that of our joint. The X direction is pointing towards the joint. And if I click on the offset 
for the ARM-based controller, its parent, it's aiming in the right direction. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to move this group, thus carrying the child, to the position of our joint. So I'm going to select first the joint, then hold command on a Mac, control on a PC, select the offset group, and again, we're going to go to the options for the point constraint. We're going to go to edit, reset, and we're going to apply. And notice that we have moved the position of the arm base control offset group. Now, every time you apply a constraint, you're going to get the constraint commands inside of the object that was constrained. So what we can do is we can select the arm base control offset orient constraint one and the point constraint one and hit delete. So now those constraints have been deleted. Notice that the parent, the arm based control offset group has carried all this information, but which is the most important part, the child, our controller, is all set to zero, except for the scale, of course. Now, the controller, it's going in the opposite direction that we want our rotation to work with, which is going to be in this direction on the rotate Z. So because this controller is the child of the arm base control offset, what we can do is take advantage of the offset. I can rotate the child 90 degrees so that it matches the orientation of our joint. And now if I freeze the transformation, notice that it matches the rotation of our joint. Here's the joint and here's the controller. What we're going to do next is we are going to create the other controllers. We are going to put one on the elbow right here and one on the hand. So let's quickly do this. I'm going to create a NURBS curve. I'm going to scale it. Then I want to make sure that it's big enough so we can see it outside of this geometry right here. It looks like it's big enough for me. I'm going to freeze the transformation and center the pivot. And then I'm going to name this one Arm Controller. I'm going to create a new null by going to Edit Group. I'm going to name this null Arm Controller Offset. Again, for parenting, we're going to select the child first. And then Command on a Mac, Control on a PC, select the parent and hit P. And now what we want to do is we want to select this joint, which is the elbow joint, and I'm going to hold command and control on a PC and select the offset, which is the parent, not the controller. And we're going to add first an orient constraint and secondly a point constraint. And now notice that we have moved right here to the right position. I'm now going to select the controller itself rotate this in Z, 90 degrees. I can even shrink it. Let me hit R. That's perfect right there. And if I was to freeze the transformation, we have it to match the orientation and position of our joint. Finally, we are going to do the same thing for the hand. I'm going to create a NURB circle skeleton. I'm going to go to freeze transformation, center the pivot. Again, let's create a new null. Name that null will be the offset for this controller. And the offset will be oriented and point constrained to this joint right here. So let's first rename these guys. So I'm going to select the controller and name this the hand underscore CTR for controller and then for the parent is going to be hand underscore controller underscore offset. So let's parent child first command on an Apple control on a PC select the parent hit P deselect everything open the folder so you can make sure that you're selecting the parent not the child. So for constraining we're going to select the constrainer first and then secondly you select what you want to constrain. So in our case is going to be the hand control offset and I'm going to go to constraint orient first and then point and now I can select the child 
and I'm going to first rotate it. So I'm going to type in 90 on the rotate Z. And then let me turn on the geometry, scale it like this. And then I'm going to freeze the transformation center of the pivot. Make sure that there are no constraints in any of our parents, like so. We are missing one controller, which is going to be the controller that's going to rotate our base right here. So let's take care of that. Let me create a NURBS curve, scale it. I'm going to freeze its transformation. And this will be the base arm controller. We're going to create a new null, deselect everything, edit group. And this null will be called the base arm controller offset for parenting select the child first command on a mac control on a pc select the child hit p i'm going to expand this folder make sure that i'm selecting the parent and what i'm going to do is i'm going to only use the point i don't want the orientation because notice the orientation of this joint right here if i was to orient the parent of this controller my controller would be at an angle like this and I don't want that I want the controller to be in the rotation angle of the world so I'm going to select the constrainer first and then I'm going to select the object that is being constrained which is the offset group I'm going to go to my constraint and all I'm going to do now is a point constraint so when I rotate this controller it matches the world orientation. Let's get rid of this constrainer. And what I'm going to do next is select the controller and then select the joint. And I'm going to go to control constraint and I'm going to do a parent constraint. Finally, this joint right here is going to be constrained to this main controller and this main controller does not need any offset because it's at the xyz00 the same thing as this joint right here what we're going to do next is we are going to constrain the joints to the controllers so that the controllers will have control of the joints and the joints will have control of the geometry